Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wednesday Call Live. Now, let's hear Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Billy. Woohoo! Woohoo! I just real remembered I made a cold contact today. Actually, a warm contact. Guys kind of works with me doing some physical fitness exercise. And I was like, I I got his phone number and everything, and I'm not even texting him anything or you know, followed up. It's just automatic. I'm just meeting people and talking trash and you know, God. Um Hope you guys are doing the same thing. You know how it is, Mike. They come down to my office and they get all fired up and they meet the Uber driver. They meet the waitress. They meet, you know, all kinds of people. And they go, how many leads can we get in Burlington, North Carolina? I'm like, hey, dumb, dumb. You live in Chicago. You live in Phoenix. You live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we got millions of leads. You're in a little tiny Burlington at my meeting. We ain't got no leads here. Well, I got this guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, whatever. Like, go get them in your own city. Like, when y'all leave this meeting, get fired up, go out and meet somebody. True that? True that? True that. True that? True that. True that. All right. Um, all right. So, I'm just going to get a quick text to him and just get to, kind of get the thing going, you know, just start greasing the skids, you know, get him going. He's sharp. He's full-time. Um Worker guy, got a couple of jobs, works down at the stretch lab. Mary got the two kids. I like him. Hey, does these look right to you? Connect with me and get your net com net con ticket. All right, good. Yeah. Backwards to me, but it looks right to y'all. Y'all I might have something I clicking on last minute, getting all of it added in. Woo! So I was telling, I was just talking to Spencer, my son, and I was like, man. You got to get your people on this call. We got three guys that anybody would be absolutely freaking out, thrilled to recruit. Okay. You are out there. Now, a lot of executives, a lot of professors, a lot of people don't think there's good people out there like you. Like they don't think Mike Morisi exists in America. They don't think Dunleavy exists. You with me? They 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 don't think y'all exist. And I go every day we're finding them. This past week, I had twenty five, might have been thirty. Should count them up. Let's 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 go with twenty eight people. I had twenty eight young executives come into my office, hung out. We did a show. They toured. Got a good chance to chat with Robbie. Got a good chance to talk with Clay. Hannah was traveling. Patrick was traveling, so they didn't get to meet them. But they meet some of our other recruiters, our licensing, our contracting, our leads department. Walked around the convention center, and I mean, just messed them up, boys. Messed them up. Then we took them out there to the shotgun range, and we showed them some skeet shooting, showed them some ponds and some fishing and a cabin. I think we're going to get some results out of it. It was it was 28 like y'all, some younger, some a little bit older, but right in y'all's game as far as how age you are. So I want to talk to people about um finding the right people. Um you were a network, Mike. Your aunt, your auntie was in business, looked like she's doing good, always dressed like a million dollars. Right, always dressed up, looking sharp, been the person, flies in on an aeroplane from out of town. Um, Jake, I think you was recruited somehow, brother's cousin's neighbor that you knew or they knew. How was it? Did you know them or did yes. they contact you or you contact them? Yeah, family friend Veray's Veray's uncle, um uh and Jara Gonzalez had dated for a little while. So a family friend of ours. So the uncle had dated Jarrah, who's one of our top producing agents in the country and building a business. And so did you right. contact her? Or did she say, ah, y'all look sharp. How'd that go down? No, she she approached us. Um, Vray was sitting at the dinner table with her mom and Jarrah walked through the front door after a day of running appointments and uh, sat down, just listened to, listening to what Vray and her mom were talking about and said, hey, Vray, you should, you should look at getting your insurance license. And it was just, <laughs> just like that. 
I think getting your insurance license is just a no-brainer. Like anybody has an opportunity to get their insurance license to get their insurance license. So that's kind of the first step, right? You don't have to say you want to make a billion dollars. You want to build a network all over the United States. Yeah, you got to get your insurance license. Why not? It's easy to get it. We have people getting it in two days, three days. Okay, those of y'all that took it seven times, don't start whining to me. We have had people get through in one day and two days. Not you, but we've had people, right? So um, why not? And then you make one sale, you make 300 bucks, 700 bucks. You might make $1,000. That's not bad. Who likes to go out and make $1,000 in an hour? Mm -hmm. I mean, you want them to do it every day, but if they did it once, they make $1,000, can't go wrong. So then once they get in class, they tell other people they got in class. Once they get in class, we start explaining to them how they can get a residual. Let's get them started one step at a time. Mike, did you approach um, Diane or did she approach you? How'd that go down? You know, it just was the right time and she approached me. So I was uh, working at the pharmaceutical job. And um, I know one morning she gave me a ring and was just like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, what have you been up to? And I was just, I was working that corporate job and just hated that hamster wheel. Felt stuck, man. And I was, wasn't was motivated over there. And she was like, hey, come check out what I'm doing. And uh, went down to Dallas, met some of the other guys on the team. And next thing I knew, I was getting my license and showing up to Instant Thunder and the events and just getting fired up out of my mind. Um, And you you were not answering ad advertisements. You were not answering Get Rich Quick. You were not answering multi-level marketing. You were not answering part-time. You sure as hell wasn't a licensed insurance agent on a list of a 1,000 agents. No. Nope. Jake, were you answering advertisements you, it seemed like you was making six no. figures or close to it in the movie industry, doing sets or something like that. Yeah, yeah, building sets close at that, like eighty five before before tax. So when it like back then, it was like eighty five thousand, <laughs> right? Heck yeah, it was yeah, eighteen years old. Let me tell y'all how funny it was. He used to tell us he made forty thousand. You know why? Because that's how much he brought home. He didn't realize he was on that. $85,000 salary because he saw his paycheck. He said, I make 40, I make 42,000. That's what he used to tell us. And then one day he was like, I think I made 85,000. We go, did you or didn't you? He go, well, that's what they said. That's what they told me. But when I looked at the check, it wasn't but 42. <laughs> I was like, that's funny right there. I don't care who you are. Um, my question is, my question, I'm going to tell you all this. So I've got these new people. This guy played NFL. This guy played football. This guy's in solar. This girl is this. This girl is that. These are people that I'm working with. So I'm saying, are you getting them on this call right now? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm, I'm going to my recruiter saying, are you getting them on this call? I want to be texting them. I've been, I've been busy as a one-armed paper hanger in the middle of a windstorm. I've been busy today. I mean, one thing, I mean, just <laughs> and schedule's crazy. And I haven't been able to text them and remind them. It only takes a second. Now, like I said, I talked to Spencer 35 minutes. I talked to two attorneys this morning, two different attorneys. I'm busy. But I got to get them people on this call because I got I need them to meet Jake and Mike and Aaron. Now, I think Aaron did answer an ad. I'm not sure why, because he's making a bunch of money in real estate. Uh, management or something. How'd that go down, Aaron? You were you you had a job, but you were looking at ads, right? So I had a job. I was kind of looking at what was out there, but Patrick Waddell, um, I was the first person that he called right after you had hired him, Andy. It was something that I applied to in I think 2019. And he called me last August. So this was like three years old at this point. And he was like, hey, here's an opportunity. And I'm like, why am I talking to you right now? Like, I appreciate the phone call, but it, insurance ain't for me, right? And I actually pulled over two minutes from my house in a pharmacy parking lot and talked to him for like 45 minutes. And he's like, hey, this guy, Andy Albright's flying up to Pittsburgh in two weeks. You should come meet him. And I was like, well, I had a bad day at work. I'm not real happy. This sounds crazy. I'm in. 
So I went to meet you, Andy, about two weeks later um, and kind of hit it off with y'all and was just thankful that y'all saw something in me at the time I didn't see in myself and just kind of run with it from there. Kind of reminds me of how, how Mike got Kate. She was put mad at her boyfriend at that particular time and couldn't find, didn't have another date. Mike asked at the exact right time, and she's like, ah, oh, what the hell? Might as well. <laughs> Next thing you know, you know, she likes him. You know, what are you going to do then? You know, you're stuck. That's where she's stuck. You know, here we go. Now we got babies. Now she got babies. I mean, what are you going to do now? You know, it's the same way. You, It's kind of like you. You're like, I'm having a bad day at work. So you meet us. You like us. Next thing you know, you got downline selling. You got paycheck coming in. What are you going to do now? You know, you just kind of, there you are. You got to make the best of the world, you know? And it kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, That's you crazy. know, guys don't understand. It's just. You either you either let stuff happen to you or you make stuff happen. And two people contacted y'all. Patrick calls a person that sent in a, a that replied three years previous, but he strikes up a relationship. Coincidentally, we were going to be in Pittsburgh and he shows up. So let's go to Ark. Let's go to Ark. Let's go to the Ark and let's look and see what's coming up. Here's where we go to recruiters go to all the time. They go on the Ark. And they go on connections, and they go all the way down to Alliance Adventures. So they go all the way to, and then they click on hotspots, and they see who's coming up. So last night in Dallas, we had four D people, four zero. We need six hundred and seventy five people at a meeting in Dallas, Texas. Okay, we had forty. We need six hundred and seventy five because six hundred seventy five leaders could go out across country and recruit. Uh, Marty Doge brought somebody back that we ain't seen in four years. Not only did they come back, they brought three people with them. Might have been four. I think three people with them. Um, Davies was there. Uh, Gina was there. It, it was a powerful meeting. Oh, I don't want to leave the, leave the seminar. Okay, so Gina. Gina. Will be in Aurora, Colorado. I wonder if that is Denver, Colorado. I'm asking my team if it's Aurora slash Denver. If that's Denver, let's put Denver. Let's put Aurora in there slash Denver so people know it's in Denver. Okay, cool. If it's in, for example, Las Colinas, Texas, Dallas. I always tell people that's Dallas because I don't want people trying. Where's Costco? It's Dallas. Fly to Dallas. Okay. All right, next. So she is in Aurora, which I think is Denver, Colorado. It's A U A U. The area code is eight zero zero one four. It's easy to plug that in and see if that's where she is. Um, all right. Then there's um, Mike Levantovich will be in Nashville, Tennessee. If you have people within three four hours, Mike's going to be there um, the twenty fifth. Is twenty fifth is tomorrow? Would be my guess. Is that right? Twenty fifth. Today, tonight, tonight, Gina is in Denver, Colorado. Tonight, Mike Levantovich is in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you know him now, it's like if I'm on this call and I got a guy in Nashville, I'm like, I gotta get there. You got to get him there. got to get him there. Joe Dukes tonight will be doing a meeting in um, location to be deter Salt Lake City. He'll be in Salt Lake City tonight at 7 p.m. It says location to be determined. Well, it's high time we determining it because it's tonight, boys and girls. Alex Abian is in Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona on the 25th. That's tonight. Man, we got like four meetings tonight. Um, New Mexico tomorrow with you, Jake? Yes, sir. Yeah, we got Gina here at our office tomorrow. Rio Rancho. Is that Albuquerque? Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna, I was just thinking that is Albuquerque's bigger, so. There's nothing wrong with putting Albuquerque slash Rio Rancho. You know, just to, you know, think about it like this. People always say, well, that's not exactly right. Well, that's not exactly marketing. Right? You know, like, like, come on, guys. Think, how do we market? How do we grow this thing? Tomorrow in Louisville, Kentucky, not shocking. Mike and Noel Levin told you they got a bad to the bone office. Tomorrow, Tia and Terry Edwards in Kernersville, North Carolina. So you got somebody Greensboro, High Point, Winston-Salem, Raleigh, North Carolina, Burlington, North Carolina. Get them to Kernersville. It's just right over there in Kernersville, not far away from Greensboro. 
Mox Corner, Andy Riddle coming down there with um, Jerry and Cassie. Now, Jerry and Cassie are coming hang out with me in Raleigh, North Carolina, so they're not going to be there, but um, their team will be there. Andy Riddle, and he's putting in more width down there, and I, and I know some other people are working on Monk's Corner. What's in Monk's Corner? That's where um, that preacher come from. Um, what's his name? He's in Charlotte now, big time. Y'all know him? You know what I'm talking about. I'll come back to that. Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Gina Hawks is in Houston, Texas, November 1st. So what I do is I'm always looking to see the meetings that are coming up where I'm recruiting. So I've got a guy that I want to be at that Albuquerque meeting tonight. His name is Travis. No, his name is Elliot. So Elliot was with me this week. I'm trying to get him to the Albuquerque meeting. So I'm thinking maybe my recruiters are going like, oh, yeah, we ought to get him there. So, all right. So we got you guys started. So the question is, what I want to hear about is your escapades. All right. So we got y'all. All three of y'all are top salespeople in the country. Y'all are steady selling. You're also top recruiters in the country. That means you're top future leaders. So I want you to be thinking, like, I've got this football player, Dave. I've got this guy named um, Elliot, who's in solar. I got this guy named Travis, who's out. He's out. I ain't in. He says, I'm not in. I'm out. Good. He's not He's not in because he's going to do solar, because solar, it's a window of time. He's going to get it now, and then it's going to go away, so he wants to get it now. And I'm like, but life insurance is going to be here forever. You could build something permanent. Never mind. I ain't got time to talk to you. But what I'm saying, and then there's another little waitress I contacted. Who are you talking to in wit that you have made it happen with? That's the first thing. And that's really what all I would like to talk about. But then who do you have in depth? Like if you, you're like, well, I got not, I got one guy, but under this person, under this person, this is who I'm talking. Just, just give me some, some feedback. Who are you looking at? How'd you find them? How'd you meet them? Stuff like that. Um, I want you to talk about a little bit about that. Now, I want to tell y'all something. Y'all three, if everybody else hears this, it's a bonus. So you're listening to me while you're thinking about your stories. I had someone come into the cabin and he sent me a text afterwards. He said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It hit me like a ton of, bleh. it hit me like a ton of bricks. You've not been recruiting salespeople. For the last 30 years, you've been recruiting future leaders of America. You've been recruiting future leaders of your company. That's why you want 11s and 12s and 10s. You hire anybody, but you're looking for future leaders. And it, it, it hit me. I was like, wonder if Mike Maurice knows that. What if Mike's trying to sell hire salespeople? Because I want well-rounded human beings that know how to read, know how to get on a jet, know how to go international. If they don't know it, they'll study it. They're not going to say, I'm scared to fly, or I've never been on a plane, or I ain't getting on a plane, or I like, I'm a homebody. I want somebody that wants to go worldwide. You know, and you say, worldwide? Well, at least Eastern North, Eastern America, or Western America, but ideally worldwide. And then after that, we're ideally nationwide. Like, I'd like to build me a team and I'd like to have a power and some money and, uh, you know, some secretaries and let's say maybe a landscape guy and, um, you know, that sort of thing one day, maybe possibly one day, maybe. That's the guy I'm looking for, nonstop. Or the girl, the girl that wants to have a business, not, I want to be the best sales. I want to be a good, solid salesperson and can make some money and go home. And I'll take them all day long i will take them it's not what i'm looking for so i don't know does that hit is any of y'all going like well wait you're not looking for salespeople, marisi i mean when i saw that message the other day and it, it was a little crazy too to kind of think of it that way because, you know, we have our ads out there. We want people going out there. We want them making the money, making the sales. 
And, you know, the, the ones that you're looking for is, you know, if, if you're looking for something, you're going to find it at some point. And, you know, if you're looking for salespeople, that's what's what you're going to continue to look for and find. Um, it's like, you know, if you're thinking of a new car that you want to get, you know, you, you want a Wrangler or something, you're going to start seeing Wranglers all over the road. Same thing with like safe money and annuities. You, you start thinking about that stuff. You just kind of start attracting it. Right. So I think, you know, changing that perspective and finding the ones that just want to build this thing crazy with you and and want that financial freedom, want to build a business, not just go out and make, you know, sales for 500 bucks a pop. I think the more that we change our mindsets on it, 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 it starts coming to us. And I think we start becoming more attractive to those types of people. If that makes sense. Do you think of me as a salesperson? Like if you hired me, would you think I'm a salesperson? I think you're salesperson <laughs> to an extent. I mean, I if you were selling, I think I'd be satisfied with that. No, I don't think you would. So why? So I think I'm. I think if we go head to head sales, I think I'm gonna win. Like if I focused I agree for that. thirty days, I just got no concept of why I would do that. It's kind of like this. I was talking to a sharp dude today, and I said, "What do you do?" He said, ah, "Let's talk about what I don't do." And he started telling me what all he does. And he finally took a breath. When he took a breath, I said. I, you don't do manual labor, do you? He started laughing. He said, yeah, that's something I don't do. I said, so you're not big on like painting walls. He said, I'm going to tell you something. If I decided to paint a wall, I'd be one of the best wall painters you ever met in your life. I just, I don't think that's right for humanity for me to be painting walls. Like I, I need to, I, somebody will send me an invite. Okay. By the way, it's Stephen Furtick. He's from Monk's Corner. Stephen Furtick's massive, runs Elevation Church. Somebody send me an invite to the to be on this call because I want to copy it and paste it and send it to this new guy I'm recruiting, the one that said I don't do manual labor. So I would be a great salesperson. You know, somebody was talking to me. I said, "Who do you think could be really run this department in our company?" And I said, "I could." And they're like, "You could?" I was like, "Yeah, I could. I ain't running that department." Does that make sense, Marisi? It'll be like, you know what, Mike? I think you. I think you could study YouTube and retile the bathroom. You think you could study YouTube, get the materials and retile the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Me too. I'm a hundred percent sure you could. I don't think you'd be satisfied though. I don't think it's so hiring a tile person is okay. Hiring a salesperson is okay, but that's not what I'm looking for. I like the way you said it. It hits you too. Jake, did it hit you at all? Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've been talking a lot to, you know, to Mike about this. And, um, you know, I was talking to some other people too, is like, you know, in those areas where you feel like you've hit a plateau, right? You grow and then it plateaus. And you know, what I'm hearing over and over again is you need to go find you another leader, you need to go find you another CEO. Not, yes, a, a salesperson is going to help grow our premium and, if we have one more person like us that can go find five, 10, 15 salespeople, that's, that's going to grow our premium a lot more than just one $20,000 producer. So no, it, it here recently more than ever has it made a lot of sense because there's only, there's only so much that I know we can do if we can find more leaders that are going to copy and do what we're doing and, and building a business. I mean, that's, that's how we're going to grow. We can't, we can't do it. If we're the only leaders in our organization, it's only going to take us so far. Um, you know, I ain't sure that when you was recruited, if you didn't think you was like, I'm a, I think I could be a salesperson. And the first time me and first time me, first time I meet you and Bray, I'm like future leaders of America. And it, it, it took a while to occur to me that that's not what you felt like you were recruited as or what you thought you were. Does that ring any bells, Jake? I think, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, up front, you know, we hear, oh, you know, an extra four or 500 bucks selling. Cool. Um, you, we see the trips, you know, our first trip was the Alaskan cruise. And we were like, that was, we were told, hey, you, you make that Alaskan cruise you will be making money. It's hard to make the trip and not be making money at the same time. Um, and yet, it, yeah, at the same time, Andy, 
um, you know, I instantly saw how, I mean, who, <laughs> for you to show someone how you can be making money while you're not necessarily selling policies, it's kind of a no brainer. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, well, why wouldn't I do that? And at the same time, it's, it, it's that self image and that, that self work, you know, I just wrote, you know, grow my self image because it's, it took me a bit, the events and the calls to see of myself as, you know, as a leader, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to, I want you to think about this, Jake, and we'll come back to it. I already got you thinking about people you're recruiting. Two things that will grow your, grow your self image more than anything in the world. What's the two things? Dunleavy, I say the same thing about you, man. I mean, I think you came in going like, I think I could be an okay salesperson. I think I can make a living selling. And then I think quickly for me, you got the impression that one, I thought you were three times better salesperson than you thought. And on top of that, I thought you could be a leader or not thought. I knew. I was like, this guy's a leader. He can he can recruit people all over the country, train people. It it was kind of a kind of a, a jam up with you too, right? I mean, because you it was like, what? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that coming into this, I never had a quote unquote sales job. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I think going back to even how my whole story played out, right? After I met you, Andy, um, y'all told me to get my license and kind of get going with this part time. And September 2nd of last year, I actually called Patrick. You were at an event somewhere and I called him and I was like, hey, Bo, I, uh, I quit my job. And he was like, well, we told you not to quit your job. And I was like, I know what you told me not to do, but I'm telling you what I did. So now I need you to tell me what I need to do next. And it's just kind of been like leaning in and trying to, to learn whether you're going to fail or you're going to succeed, learn from it either way. Um, I talk with, you know, Spencer, Brandon, Clay, Hannah, Patrick, Robbie all the time. And I think the word that is underused so much that I've had a great appreciation for is the word pivot. It's necessarily going in a situation, right? Situation could be good or bad, whatever it is, but how you can adjust and pivot in the moment. And I think that's made, honestly, a big bit of difference for me, um, even just recruiting people. Like, I'm still new to this thing. I, I started full time in January and recruiting to me is something that I need a lot of work on. I'll be the first to admit it. I've had some success with it, getting people in class, but I've also had a bunch of failures that I've learned from. Um, I was just talking to Brandon yesterday and I didn't at the time understand it, but now I got perspective on it and I learned what not to do. I sold a lady a policy about four months ago. Her agent that I got her from was a Lincoln Heritage guy who used to be her old maintenance guy. So he knew everybody in the complex. He got into insurance sales and went to sell her a policy. After I sold her a policy, I went and knocked on the guy's door and tried to recruit him for this. He didn't answer. We got a phone call and he realized what I was about. And I started the conversation with, hi, my name's Aaron. I just took your client. You're getting a charge back. Would you like to come work with us? And quickly, I learned a whole lot of words in the dictionary that I didn't know existed. But I learned what not to do on that situation. So I now, thought it I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. I, you're telling me he didn't appreciate the humor in it? He, he didn't appreciate the humor. I, I thought it was from a place of love and honesty and honestly transparency, but I guess he didn't see no. it that way. No, no. I, think if, I think if you'd have went into it, this is funny as hell, <laughs> you would have had a better shot. Yeah. So uh, I ran into another one yesterday and I called Brandon last night for coaching. And I'm like, hey, what can I do with this one different that I don't repeat the same mistake? So I think so, it's just that, so let's do it over. I, yeah. I went there and saw I sold them American income. I sold them a, a, a Gerber. I sold one of those policies. You know, what I'm talking about we ain't going to bad mouth yeah. no company, but we sold a we sold a state farm and life insurance policy. Right. OK. Or something. Yeah. So you call me up. You didn't replace my policy. I got a chargeback coming. How's it going to go? Ringy, ringy. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is Andy. How can I help you? Hey, Andy. Uh, my name's Aaron. 
I uh, I run into you um, a couple times now, and I've I've heard some good things about you. Um, I don't think I've been stepping on your toes too terribly much, but I've been seeing your name pop up a bunch of times from sitting with different clients, and I've seen that you work for this company. It seems like y'all are great. You're a real people person. I just wanted to give you the insight that it seems like you're kind of in a situation where y'all are, are limited in capacity. I work with a huge brokerage and we have a bunch of different options. Okay. I'm going to give you a second chance. You yeah. really, you really not asking me a bunch of questions and jacking with me. You just doing all that speech before you let me talk. I mean, I'm asking. Yeah. And that's, that's a, okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. You got to give me a chance to talk. Cause I can't remember everything you're saying. I'm only, I'm only going to remember the last thing you say. Okay. I'm thinking back myself now, but, but I was feeling the smoke up my bunkie. Like I was feeling good. Like you were treating me really good. I was, I was feeling good. I just wanted to talk. I got you need to listen more and ask a question and give you the opportunity. And ask a question that kind of take me down the bunny rabbit hole. Okay. Like, for example, we know the company sucks. We wonder if I know it. Okay. We know we ain't got, he ain't get much commission. We don't know if he knows it. We know he's getting chargebacks, but we don't know if he knows what's causing it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just wondering if he realized. I wonder if he's, I wonder if he's from this area. I wonder if he's new to insurance. I wonder what he studied in college. I just wonder. I wonder, wonder who. Okay, God, this is we we got to go back to who we working on. So that's who you're working on. You're working on this guy. So that yeah. we kind of got into it. Well, tell me how it's going. How you meeting people, running ads, talking to people. So I'm gonna give you a chance to answer that question. I want you to think about. Tell me, Aaron, who you working with? What? Tell me some of your scenarios. What's happening? Where they are? So right now I'm working warm market people. And I've got some people in class and I've wondered, Andy, how you can, what advice you would give in terms of getting more warm market people into, buy, not necessarily buying into us, but seeing the vision through. Yeah, I, I 100% know we are. Do me a favor. Just talk about your top couple ones. Are they fired up? Are they on this call? Do, you know, are they licensed? Give me, give me top couple people where they are in the mix. Okay. So, um, one of my top ones right now is actually the, the niece of the girl I, uh, that I used to work with property management job. Kirsten, uh -huh. you met her up here in Pittsburgh. She's the one with the dad. What's her name? Uh, Kirsten yes. Greno. K-I-R-S-T-E-N. Okay. Um, Kirsten, very excited, very passionate about this. I think we just got to get her over the hump, out of her head, over the hump, and get her around the great leaders that we got here and kind of help her build her self-image more and see that she can actually do this. Um, another one I got in is named Sam. He's actually down in Shalote, North Carolina. So I've uh, done sports card trading with him for four or five years. It's a side hustle thing, kind of talking to him about this opportunity, got him into it. And then another kid I was fired up about over in Philly was Dave Friend. Um, if I could just get him to see his potential in himself, I think we could really kind of get him going with this. And, I mean, from a sales background, from a personality standpoint, he checks all the box. It's just a matter, I think, for him of willpower. All right. Dave Emerson is on. Dave is on. Dave, what's up, brother? It's Dave. This is who you're looking for. Jake, you're looking for Mike. You're looking for Aaron. I want this. Spencer, I want you to call Aaron Dunlevy and talk about these three people and maybe get on a three-way call with him and let him hear you talk to these three people, period. Let's get them to the next event. Let's get them on the next call. Let's get them to take one inch forward, one step in front of the other. Okay, so what you see what I just did, Aaron? I just told yeah. Spencer to call you because here's the deal. If I'm working on a deal, I'm the best. No, I need Chris Norris to get on it. I'm the best. No, I get yeah. Hannah. 
I need Hannah to get on it because I'm 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 too deep in it that I can't see it from the outside. I'm too deep. Like if you're inside the forest, you can't see the trees. Right. You got to call up Jesus. Can you can you give me a guidance here? Where's the, what does the trees look like from where you stand? Right. Okay. Spencer's right. up. Spencer's up here. He can look down and talk about Kristen and Dave and Sam. Okay. And then you got you got Brandon. Manly. So you accessing others does not mean that you have a slow, low self. It does not mean you have a low self image, higher self image. People are not scared. I mean, like immediately I got a legal, I told you, I talked to two attorneys this morning because this other guy's smarter, is smarter than me. And he's telling me something. I said, ah, I'm going to talk to my attorneys and I'm going to learn it. I got them. So I've got them. They're all in the mix because I got a good solid self image. I'm not scared. I'm going to let them figure it out. So getting dispenser to figure it out, but pushing them to them. Now I got to push these attorneys to talk to each other, his attorney and my attorney. So I can, but just higher self image allows help not to do it for you, but to help. Okay. So Sam was a buddy from sports car trade in Shalot, North Carolina. What I laughed about it is 30 years ago, one of my best friends is an Amway agent yeah. and he's now in the insurance not with us he's with like a state farm or a farm bureau but nice guy adam katz is adam katz is laughing because he's good friends with him shalote north carolina we just ain't heard who who knows anybody from shalote north carolina i mean that's like tiny tiny little, little not even crossroads maybe you know yeah. i'm trying to remember his name adam will probably text me his name but i know him 30 years ago all right now um, Spencer said he talked with Kristen. She has her ticket. Talked to two others as well. Not as sharp as her. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're under her. Okay. Hopefully she's on this call and we can nudge her again. And Jake is getting ready to tell her how to grow self-image and Sam and Dave and, and Aaron, how do you grow self-image? Okay. Okay. The first thing is learning what self-image people with good self-image, what do they do? That's a big deal. So one thing with good self-image persons gets help. Okay. All right. I got you on Sam. How about Dave? How did you, did you meet him at ad or is he somebody, you know, is he a warm contact in Philly? No, uh, warm ish. So I went on, I was talking with Patrick and Clay about this. And at the time it, we don't know if it was a good idea. It was a bad idea, but it was my idea and I was running with it. So I just started seeing mutual friends I had on Facebook. If I had like 50, 100 people that were mutual friends, smash that friend button. Dave actually went smash on. the friend button. What does that mean? Tell me what you mean. Just send him a friend request. Hey, do you want to connect? And Dave actually, at the time, was looking for a new job. Just popped up on my feed. Hey, I'm not happy. I'm looking for instances. I'm looking for opportunities. Started talking to him back and forth messaging. Come to find out, he's from the same area where I grew up. We actually went to rival high schools. He's three years younger than me, lives in Philly. So him and I actually talked on the phone a bunch. I drove from Pittsburgh to Philly for a weekend in July with leads and showed him how to do the business. I was with him for three days, got to meet three people he was close to at a Panera Bread for lunch. And just talked to him about the opportunity and was trying to build depth while I was there. Okay. See, what I'm telling you, Jake and Mike, it's pure brilliance, pure genius. Imagine if we each had 100 people doing what he just said. If they did that once a week. Spencer's best guy, he just got met at Chipotle. A friend of a friend mash the friend button, send them a DM, get their phone number, call them and start talking to them. What do you think? Two things, Jake. First of all, do you know these are the answers or just yours, your guess? Uh, this is just things that I've felt like helped me in the past. Yeah, this is more of my guess. <laughs> all right. So um, everybody pay attention. This is his guess. It's not, it might be the right answer. 
What is yeah. it? So, what drives self image? I mean, first thing, first thing that hit me right in the head, in the in the front was uh, was working, is working. You know, in times where ding, I stayed busy, ding, ding, ding. That's the winner. <laughs> That's the number one. Keep talking about that. That's it. You're right. So yeah. now you feel right. Now you don't have yeah. to feel like you're leading leading somebody wrong. <laughs> okay, good deal. Um, yeah, I mean, Ray and I, Ray and I have talked about it. Um, you know, you you said. People who are on the leaderboards love them, but people who they pay attention to them, but people who aren't on the leaderboards, they're just like, man, I don't care. Like, eh, it, don't don't bother me. I'm like, well, yeah, you're not on it. So, I mean, you work enough, you work enough, you'll get your name on a leaderboard and you'll start walking around like this, like Conor McGregor, you know? Um, and when you've been on the lead, like when I saw, when I saw Abian and Levitovich and Dukes, on the the new with the 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 new with uh, unique riders in a month, and I was like, shit, man, it, it made me mad because I, I mean we we were on there just a little bit down, and I was like, I almost felt like I let them down, you know, and uh, so yeah, so working um, working helps with self image, and I mean the other thing that hit me right in front of the head was uh, was I mean getting around getting around other like minded people, you know, going to the events if you're invited to something to a function going to it. Um, you know, when you, when you hang around some low life people probably don't feel all that much. Same thing with reading, you know, reading helps with that. So. All right. Two, two number one things. And you don't have to, by the way, you kind of said work and results drives your self image up. Just work. You don't need results. Cause if you work hard, you start to get mad because like I deserve to get a break. I deserve to make a million. So instead of who am I? I don't deserve it. I'm a nobody. Well, of course, because you're not working. But when you start working 60, 70, 80, 90, you work a hundred hour week, you start getting, damn, somebody to give me some money. You, I mean, like your whole, your whole self image changes with work. Okay. The results is a different subject. Like, yeah. well, that creates results. Uh, not necessarily because you could be you could be you could be doing it wrong. You could be working really hard and do it wrong, but your self image goes up. And as your self image goes up, you start to look around and go like, "Can I get some help?" So the more you work, your self image goes up, and then you start getting the help. You start getting the knowledge because you feel like you deserve to get that six figures. So it's just pure work. I I I I know you want to. I know people want to say when I read and I get smart and make myself work go out. Uh, yeah, but not like work. Work will drive it up. It'll drive it through the roof. By the way, work solves depression. Work solves confusion. Work solves drinking. Work will solve a bunch of stuff. Pornographic addiction. Work will solve it. Because what happens is you get focused on that what you need to do. All right. Now, the other thing it'll build it is failure. I already said not necessarily success is failure because as when you fail, you start thinking, damn it, I need a victory. I need, I deserve. See, deserve. Okay. So then you start reading books, listening to audios, hanging around the right people because you feel like you deserve it. And then when you're around the right people, you start asking questions, you get aggressive with it. So those, so your people, that that's what you want to get out of them. <coughs> Don't leave you, you trick them into working. You trick them into following a schedule. Oh, who? Aha. New issue paid legs. Okay. Personal direct first issue paid. Joe Dukes put in five so far this month. Not only did he recruit 15 people or 20, five of them have sold a policy. That's good. Five new legs. Terry Edwards, four new legs. Kyle Harry, three new legs. DJ Waters. Who is DJ? DJ is in the hierarchy of Manly, Sean Boone, Maya Spencer, not confused with Spencer Albright, Maya Spencer, who hired DJ, who played professional basketball in different countries. He, he, he's he got three new people issue business. I love it when a new name like that. Who is that? That's when you go, yeah, baby, that group's getting growth. Um, Mike Levantovich, not shocking. They're smoking. Two new legs in width. Riddle, two new. 
Jason Mathis, two new. Brandon Manley, two new legs. Son in law, they got two new legs. Got this one going, got this one going. Um, Jake and Bill Krause, two more new legs selling. Um, Stephen Holly Davies, woohoo, Davies, big hierarchy, got two new legs selling. And Tad Peterson got two new. And Michael Hartley got two. A ton of people only have one. Adam Cash, Jared Gonzalez, your your cousin, um, Brian Beasley, Jake, Jake and Bray got one so far this month, according to our records. Um, Sean Taylor saw him, uh, Sean Mayo saw him yesterday. Um, Sion, that is Fitz Group. A couple other people, Fitz Group, trying to remember all the names. David Bragg got him one. Adam Burge got him one. Kevin Lewis got him one. David Fleming, Panda Man got him one. Megan Wood got one. Karen Anderson got one. It's a lot. I can't. There's one on and on and on and on and on. People just got one. So one more puts you in that top echelon. That's what I was, I was telling Spencer this too, Jake, is you don't understand how important one person is. Like you can go from down here, you're in the pack tied with 80 people. We got one new issue paid. One more, and it puts you in the top 10. If it costs you $6,000 to get that one, now you're in the top 10. You went from bunched up with a bunch of people to right here to the top echelon. Well, that's not important being an echelon. It is to me. I like winning. Hey, um, Jake, who are you working with? You getting started. What's something good about them? Yeah. Um, so with in depth, um, some new with coming on, uh, my buddy RJ, um, he's here in Albuquerque, Rio Rancho. Um, he's, uh, a just carrier contracted, uh, wrote a policy on himself. Um, he's got, he's bringing a guest to our meeting tomorrow, getting ready to, uh, getting ready to run some, uh, some first appointments with leads. Um, him and his wife, Suzette sharp, young couple, Got uh, two of the cutest girls. Uh, they got their tickets to NatCon. Already making good money, you know, between the two of them, making over well over six figures. So they've seen success and they want more. Um, looking for the needy, not the uh, or looking for the greedy, not the needy. Um, so we're uh, we're excited for them. Um, got a buddy in uh, in the Dallas area, Alex. He's getting started. Uh, young single dude. Um, Led, how, did meet, led, how did you how did you meet the first one how did you meet this one oh yeah um so rj we went to we went to school together we ran track in middle school and high school um and we i think i texted him yeah i texted him because we were looking for a new staff and i was just reaching out to all my buddies with a 505 area code hey we're looking to grow our office we need some help do you know of anyone and he said uh, he said no i don't know of anyone right now but hey, how's it going? Good to hear from you. We just started chatting back and forth. He said, man, uh, I see you guys traveling everywhere. I think he saw something on Instagram. Um, and so I called him up and we were just talking and he talked about an all expense paid trip he earned with his lot, with his company. So we started talking about travel and then I was like, dude, you should take a look at this. Um, and then, yeah, from there I got licensed and he's getting ready to roll. Um, I love that you started the talking. Um, that you 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 initiated it. Okay, I love that it's somebody you knew because anybody can do it. Like I've got so many hooks in the water, like you described. Now watch this. I'm 59. Like I'm not only want to recruit people my age. So I'm having to meet people like the guy that stretches me at the stretch lab, like the girl that waits on me at, at, at Village Grill, like a football player that I met on the sideline. Like I'm networking like crazy because that's the where you get people that you know who they are. Occasionally we run an ad and you find an Aaron Dunleavy. But look how much work it was. He had to talk to you, friend you, turn you around. Just so happened we were going to be in Pittsburgh. But it still works. It's like hooks in the line. Okay. I'm recruiting while I'm talking to y'all. So my new guy, Dave, that's on the line. Dave, I'm going to be in Hollywood November 1st through the 3rd. Hollywood, Florida, which is down in West Palm. I want to do some morning. I'm, I'm there in business meetings during the day. But I'm going to have lunch. I'm going to have night meetings. And I'm going to be at a fabulous hotel. So, Dave, 
you need to be thinking, who do you know like Jake? Who do you know like Mike? Who do you know like Don Levy? Who do you know like you, but 24, 25, 26? Who do you know like Sean Boone? And Sean Boone, I'm going to be there for three days, maybe four. Nope, I'm going to be three days. So Tuesday night, Wednesday night. So I'm going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, Because I'm going to be back in – because I'm going to be back in Raleigh with Sean Boone and some other people. No, Stephen Davies on the 4th. Okay, so you hear how I'm, I'm – like people don't have many fishing lines I got in the water. If you've ever fished and have four four bobble hook heads out there, you're watching this one, one of them's will, you know, fish biting here, one runs with it, two got the bait off, you got to get bait on. And it's a lot going on. That's why you want assist. That's why you want assistance. You want administrative help because somebody's got to help you watch. Somebody's got to help you reel. Somebody's got to put the line back on, put the hook back on, put the bait back on. You got so many things going. You need help. But in the beginning, you're trying to get like right now, Don Levy. You want to have too much to do. A lot of people say, "I just want to work with this one." They want to work with this one. No, you, you got so many hooks in the water. You don't get mad when you lose one. Okay, and you don't lose your mind when you catch a little one. You know we're looking for a big one. You know you're looking for that future leader, right? Um, so I know I'm in Hollywood. I need to get a. I need to get a. Um, I need to get a meeting set up. A definition something, something set up. But I'm going to be there, so I'm going to be doing some meetings. Um, mm, so Mike, tell me people that you got. Coming on direct to you, how you're recruiting them, a little bit about them. Absolutely. So, um, some of the first guys, I know you're asking about some depth. Well, you're asking for width or depth because I got a few guys in depth right now that I'm pretty excited about. Any in width that you got you want to just mention? Yeah. I mean, I got some new guys coming through this week. Um, last night I had, uh, from an ad. Her name is uh, Chananza. She lives out in Dallas. She's been working at United as a healthcare consultant for the past five years. Um, single, no, no husband, no pets, nothing. Grew up in Houston, looking for something to get out of her current role. Um, goal is about making 15 grand a month and getting out of that job. And she's, yeah, she made it out to the event last night. But Stephen Davies and then uh, Gina Hawks, and she came through. She did come through an ad, so I've got ads out there. And actually, now that I think about it, she's she actually did come through um, with Ronnie Shipley in depth. So her and I have been kind of tag teaming on um, on that one from that ad. So I think that was probably the one from last night that came through. So she ran the ad. So Ronnie ran the ad, got the person, and now you're working with her too. For sure. I act like every person's direct. I act like every person's direct. That's genius. Um, Who else in depth? Depth, I got uh, Ryan Willish. He's out in uh, Dallas as well. Um, He runs a 20, one of those 24 hour, 24 seven fitness places. So he's a manager over there. And um, he came through John Krieg, who is out there run, running business. But John is just bringing guys left and right. But Ryan, he's wanting to get out of that um, that manager job over there. He, uh, military, young dude, um, like early 30s. But he he's bringing on Ahmed, who works at the gym. Rachel, who's a personal trainer. She's in class. And so is Ahmed. And then we've also got uh, Dash, who's another girl that works as a uh, personal trainer in the gym too. And his other assistant manager who just left, he's hiring for a new manager at his job. And he's literally just like hiring people to get their license and come work with us, dude. So it's like, it's exploding down there. Um, Let me get this straight. So he, he runs a facility. So he's running ads. They came in, they come in and he flips the switch and turns them into recruiting them into insurance. Yeah. I'm telling them that you should just make a requirement for anyone you're talking to, to get an insurance license. <laughs> we got a, we got a guy just ran an ad. He said, dual career, real estate and insurance. He's already a real estate agent. Dual career, real estate and insurance. Comes to the seminar Tuesday night, and he says people are reaching out to him left and right. He's not recruiting them for real estate, but he has a real estate license. But mm-hmm. that 
that stigma, the the snitch, the 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 hitch, the catch. What's grabbing them is dual career, real estate and insurance. Come see how we do both. Hmm. Hmm. You're you're hiring for fitness and turn it into fiscal fitness. I hope oh. Jamie's watching this. We got a guy. I don't know how much he grows. I don't know how much he nets. I think he nets around 75. He owns a, a facility, right? So people paying money, net 75. I told him, so why don't you just, he said, I'm thinking about selling. I was like, who wants to buy a job? Like you got a job. Who wants to buy it? You might, if you're 75, you might sell it for a hundred grand. Woo. You might sell it for 120. I don't know. It's just hard to sell a job. You know what I mean? Because whoever comes in, they're going to get weights and they get a build and they get, basically they got rent. They got maintenance and they got to come in and sell memberships. I was like, got an idea. Why don't you just pay a guy and say, hey, I'll run an ad, 50000 You get a guy, you come in there and he's fired up. He wants to lift weights. He wants to work at a gym, fifty grand, and then you keep twenty five. What if you have to pay him seventy and you keep five? Like, oh, here's an idea. Jamie, why don't you start running some ads? People are coming in for physical fitness. You only go hire one, the next other 27 that apply, because they will apply. You show them how to get an insurance. So you show them physical fitness and fiscal fitness, financial fitness. That's what your people are doing, Mike, right? Right. Yeah. Ain't nothing like swiping a good idea. <laughs> Let's go. So, so I'm telling... Okay, so here's the funny thing. All three of you are kind of accomplished salespeople. And so many people plug into my calls and they go, I don't understand why you don't talk about sales. Because to me, it's easy and you can learn it without a problem. Okay. But let's let's give a couple sales tips. Like, what would you tell people is your the number one thing you see about salespeople that that you know is wrong and you're like, Nah, that's not good. You need to switch it to this. I'm going to do mine first. You can reiterate on mine. They ain't making phone calls. That's my number one. They they make, they make say things like, I made 37 phone calls today. Well, I'm an engineer. I've, I've done time study, most studies. I've studied. That's about an hour of work. So today, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is 12 hours, you worked one hour. 8 p.m., 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is 12 hours, you work one, 37 phone calls. So learn how to monitor your work and figure out whether you're really working or not. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to go. That's the first one I see. Why they don't make phone calls, I don't know. Maybe they ain't got no leads. They ain't got enough leads. They didn't buy leads. The upline won't help them with leads. I don't know what the deal is. What would you say, Mike Marisi? What coaching tip would you give from sales today? Coaching tip you're saying on more of like what people would think. How to get more sales. I my advice is telling them to make I need marketing. for you to make 400 phone calls in a day. That's what my advice is. What would you advise? More activity, have an activity goal. I know um a while back, Andy, you and I had this conversation. I think it was like the end of the year or something, last year or two years ago. Um, and you said, Hey, stop thinking about a, a dollar amount and do an activity goal for you each week. And those numbers will take care of himself. The scoreboard will take care of itself. If you have your activity goal running 30 appointments a week, 500 dials, whatever it is, the the rest of the AP, the, the money in the bank, that's going to happen afterwards. So it's the activity. It, it comes down to the activity. It's not always the results. I always say that. Monitor your activity, and I would mm -hmm. say monitor it and see what many phone calls you're making per hour. Try to work four hours. So 40 phone calls, 40, that's 80, 160. It's not terrible, mm -hmm. but at least you know you work four hours. How about you, Jake? What's something you see that they're doing wrong, and how would they correct it? What's the activity or action they should do? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I second both of you is the activity. Then once you, once you have the high activity though, now you're going to see some stuff happen. And the next thing that I see people making a mistake of um, is, is not seeking coaching. I mean, yeah, if you go out there and you make 500 dials in a day, you're going to make some sales. They're going to be the two of the 10, the two laydowns, right? Now you go run 40 appointments in a week. 
because you're getting good at dialing, making a ton of phone calls, you're eventually going to get pissed off and a little bit upset that you've got all these appointments and you're not closing enough of them. So that's where I see people making the mistake is they they now they have the activity. The, the next thing is they're not reaching out for help. Oh, this person told me they're not interested. So I just hung up or, oh, you know, they said they got it taken care of because they already have a policy. So I just left. And it's like, Mm, if you would have called and asked for help, I guarantee we've seen every single one of your situations you're running into, but I can't, Hey, I can't, I can't climb a fence. It's hard to lean, climb a fence, leaning towards you, hard to kiss a girl leaning away from you. And I can't help someone who doesn't want help. So that's, that's the, that's one of the biggest things outside of activity is they're not, they're not asking for help. Imagine a fence leaning like this and you're trying to climb up it. your feet dangling down. It's hard to do. The girl's leaning like this, trying to you trying to kiss her, leaning like this. It's hard to do. Try to help somebody that don't want help. That's good, Jake. That's good. What do you think, Don Levy? So I was thinking every time I actually see Maurice, I think of the first interaction I ever had with you. And I don't even know if you remember this, and if you don't, that's okay. But the first time I met you in Dallas. I said, hey, I saw your bang, bang lead video with John Davies that you did. And you told me in terms of the events, you got to go to grow. But I take that in terms of sales, too. So, right, obviously, when you go to the events, you're going to pick up on things that key leaders say from different things from their experiences. But in, just in terms of like making sales dials, if somebody tells you they're not interested on the phone, Go to their house, go door knock on their door. Like just because they said no on the phone or just because honestly, they've said no twice on the phone. Um, Andy, I think you know this because I was talking to you guys about it at lunch when we were in Orlando. I write letters to people. If they if I can't get them on the phone, I just got another sale last week because a lady on the 4th of August told me to go F myself on the phone. And last Tuesday, I was sitting in her living room on her recliner with her dog licking my face, and I sold her a policy. And it's all because I wrote her a letter with the lead, stuck it in the mail, showed up at her house, and I'm like, Miss Ma'am, I'm Aaron, how are you? And just kind of went from there. So you've got to go. I mean, it goes back to what Maurice said. You've got to go to grow, and I just try to implement that in all aspects of things. Thank you, Maurice, for giving my man some brilliant advice. <laughs> let's go. Or let's grow. So thanks, man. I appreciate even, it. Even if they told okay. you to go F yourself, you still go see him. Sure, why not? What do you, I mean, it's if if the lead just sits there, you're not going to make any money. I've learned that the hard way. So you'd be surprised going back how many times. I was talking earlier, Andy, when I went to visit Dave over in Philly. I was working with closing people since July from Philly over the phone that I just got him closed, the wife and the husband, the first week of this month. And it's just go, go, trying to follow up. Hey, are we ready to do this? Is this important to you? And just kind of persistency, dedication. I don't know, not taking no for an answer. It's all the same thing, but ultimately you got to go to grow. And you did not think of yourself as a salesperson at all in the beginning, did you? Oh, gosh. I don't think of myself as a salesperson now. Me neither. Me, me neither and you neither. Here's the deal, though. You're a worker. Yeah. And you you get, you graduated University of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Pennsylvania? Penn State. Penn, Penn State. State. Penn State. Baby. What? Penn State, man. Like. Yep. You got to be a salesperson to get through Penn State. You got to sell yourself that's worth it going to these absolutely boring classes that are inconsequential in your life. Yeah. You're like, what is this ever going to mean to me? And the answer is nothing but a check. Check it all because I got to have it to graduate. Yeah. You got to sell yourself. That's the hardest person to sell is you. So I knew you was a salesperson. There's no doubt. I mean, it's not. I knew that you could get checks. I don't know about a salesperson, but I knew you could get checks. 
And you understand that a no is not a no. It's just not now. Right. But a lot of that you did on your own, just working. Like, tell them some more. So, again, I'm telling Dave. I'm telling Spencer. I'm, I'm telling everybody. I'm telling Maya. Go find people like Aaron. Tell them a little bit more about you. What's your degree? How old were you when you graduated? Did you pay for college? Were you on the scholarship? Were you an athlete? You know, did you get a job right out of school? Did you get a great job? Just tell them some stuff. So, because we're looking for somebody like you, Aaron. Kind of tell us who you are, who we're looking for. Okay. So, I'm from a very small farm town um, in South Central Pennsylvania. I went to Penn State, um, graduated class of 2013, and I moved out here to Pittsburgh actually in 2014. Um, I was working for a closed captioning company for about six years. Basically, I watched TV all day. In a nutshell, that's what I did. Um, and then I went into property management and worked two property management jobs. First was for a Penn State grad, fixed his portfolio, and my thank you was $3,000 bonus and a lot more work and a lot more travel, and I respectfully declined that. And then I went to work for the last guy I was at before. Um, Y'all found me, and I was just had enough. I was going to do this anyway part-time. But I just quit and was like, hey, I don't know what this is, but I think I'm interested. Let's kind of just grind it out. Um, I know for a while I was just keeping my head down and and work. And now I'm more about keep my head up and look brighter for the future. So I'm trying to I'm trying to be a Jake Joseph. I'm trying to be a Mike Morisi. Um, I know I'm never going to be them because I'm an Aaron Dunleavy. But it's how can you see what y'all are doing and try to mirror and match and try to get to that point, right? I don't know. You just got to find grinders. I uh, I know I'm not gifted with sales. I know that I'm not the best at everything. But something that I've taken pride in myself is uh, I'm going to outwork most people. My goal is to outwork everybody. Um, I know there's there's superstars out there. There's there's Megan Woods of the world. I'm not a Megan Wood. Um, I'm an Aaron Dunleavy, but I'm I'm a grinder and just grind, keep your head up, and keep trying to win. Like you said earlier, Jake, the leaderboards. Just I'm looking at the leaderboard, and I'm, I'm I said this from day one. Like I'm coming. I don't know what that means yet, but I'm coming. And just gradually, just up, up, up. Keep shooting for the next shot. <laughs> Somebody told me you recently started like trying to do something in the morning, like try to get moving or talking or on the phone or read something. I don't know what it was, but somebody just mentioned to me, Aaron, is something, does that ring any bells? Yeah. Um, do you want, do you want the raw, the raw answer or do you want the, the short answer? What do you want? Um, just tell me what you're doing. Like, how do you get your day kicked in? So I went breakthrough for me. Um, it's a powerful event. I learned I was depressed. I wasn't happy with my self-image. And I was in a dark place about three, four weeks ago, a place I don't wish anybody would ever be, right? And I had people that cared about me in the organization, friends, reached out to me talking. I talked to Andy Lynch, great guy, stud, stud, stud. If you don't know him, get to know him. Um, I talked to Andy Lynch every morning at 6 a.m. I get up every morning now. I read. I, well, first I call Andy Lynch. 601, I call Andy Lynch. I start reading. I go for a walk with the dog every morning. I've read more books since Breakthrough than I probably have in the last eight years combined. Just small stuff. And it gets my mind right. By noon, I feel like it's five o'clock and the sun's up in the sky. I'm like, man, this is great. This is just amazing. Getting yourself in a routine and just trying to get your mind right and I'm smiling a lot more than I was a month ago. I promise y'all that. Oh, get a running buddy. Somebody you can talk to. Yeah. Pick up a book. Get outside. Walk around. Move. Quick. Quick. Like a bunny. Yeah. Quick like a bunny rabbit. I love it, man. I love it. Thank you, Lynch. We had another guy down there. Ben Smith said he getting ready to go cray cray. So that, that area is going to be a hotbed. Sarasota, Fort Myers, yeah. Bradenton. Mm. Um, same thing, Mike Maurice. Who who are you? Who we? Well, I know we're looking for you. Well, I know we're looking for you and a Kate. Um, 
Tell us something. Yeah, so Mike Maurice, uh, Chicago, uh, graduated from uh, University of Loyola uh, back in 2010, played D1 volleyball college there. Uh, once I got out, um, I played overseas for a little while in Austria, six on six indoor, got to travel all over Austria, a few other spots in Europe, a blast doing that. Uh, came back and got into advertising sales. I was working um, over the phone to start smiling and dialing, got out face to face, was traveling all over the country. And I kind of transitioned into a pharmaceutical job. Um, heard about it through a family friend and worked at a pharmaceutical sales for about five, you know, right around five years. I was going out traveling all across the country, man, just, uh, pulling a lot of doors, walking into pharmacies and just setting up new accounts and uh, doing new business development. And I can tell you, I literally drove Chicago to California, California, to Texas, all the way to the East coast in Georgia, back up to Chicago, hit a lot of places. And yeah, um, yeah by the end of doing all that and expanding this company cross country for uh, another guy, it wasn't really, um, too much of a, you know, bonus or upgrade in my pay or nothing. And after a while, I was like, what am I doing here? The future here is not where I want to be. And next thing I knew, I was getting my license. <laughs> I was going out and selling on the side in the moonlight. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my work history. Um, married to uh, my beautiful wife, Kate, her and I, we've been married for four years. And uh, we've got our son, MJ, who's who's two. And we got a baby girl that's time is ticking less than a month. Going to have a baby number two here soon. So. But um, yeah, man, just southwest suburbs, of Chicago. And um, yeah, big family out this way and just building it. So. Kind of my story. Sticking to it. Okay, so so think about it. Find somebody that's traveled all over the country, that's driven all over the country, somebody that played college sports, somebody that's been on international travel, somebody that's married thinking about starting a family, somebody's thinking freedom, somebody's thinking about cash flow for kids, got a head on his shoulder, graduated a decent university, a big university where he met some people. Got a job making making decent money. Why is making decent money? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like what what we say, Mike, if, if me, Robbie, and Clay and, and Patrick, if we find somebody like you, we're like, hey, don't slobber on them. Don't, don't show them how impressed we are. Like, let's just be nice to them and bring them on slowly. But that's the kind of person you're looking for. Looking for you, Mike. We're looking for you, Dunleavy. We're looking for you, Jake. You're a different world. Young, started work when you was like four years old or something crazy. And I don't know what it was, Jake. Tell them a little bit about you. You started work young. You you you've you been a hard worker. You got married young, babies young. Yeah. Yeah. So um originally grew up in New Jersey. Um watch my parents working for themselves their you know, their whole lives from freelance photography to landscaping business to daycare. And I just remember I was always their employees. I was cleaning the preschool. I was cutting lawns, you know, um, at, you know, six, seven, eight years old. And then, uh, you know, met, met my, my amazing wife, um, for uh, sophomore year of high school. And, uh, you know, ended up getting a, getting something thrown into the mix, you know, finding out that we were having our first kid at 17 years old. So, um, you know, just had to, had to make things happen, you know, had to grow up real quick. Um, didn't have time to, to play around or mess around with anything. So, um, first job ever, you know, worked at pizza hut through high school and made sure we could at least get our high school degree. Uh, that lasted all of, you know, a year and a half, um, did two days of community college and said it wasn't for me. Um, we had an opportunity to start our own business because Vare grew up seeing her parents work for themselves. I saw my parents work for themselves, saw an opportunity to, to build a business on Amazon. So we, uh, we had some life savings dropped, you know, 15, 20 grand into some products from China 
um, moved our shop from Albuquerque to Peru for two months, uh, <laughs> had an opportunity, lived in Peru. So we took a risk and, and ran over there and uh, it wasn't quite the best system. So we saw that uh, we needed to come home and I needed a job. So I had an opportunity to work in the movies and build some movie sets. All I needed was to be 18 years old. So uh, just went to work there and just just I guess no wasn't an answer. You know, it was hey, you want to work Saturday? Sure. You want to work Sunday? Yeah. Um, you know, I remember I was the last person to leave because stuff needed to get done. And I mean, they told me that was my job. So, you know, work now that I see, I was like, damn, I was young and dumb. I should have been smarter than that, but you know, worked more hours than I was supposed to, didn't get paid for it. And um just, you know, grew responsibility there and after five years of beating myself up and not knowing how I got home, falling asleep in the morning, falling asleep on the way home, I was like, God's keeping me alive long enough. Um, I got to find something different before I kill myself. So, uh, yeah, just was was always looking for the next thing. Knew, knew we wanted to travel the world. We've That's one thing we never were afraid to spend money on. You know, our, our vacations with our kids is we were not afraid to spend money. Um, we would save up take them wherever, you know, go to Hawaii, go to the East coast to see family, go to California, um, go to different places. And, um, we, uh, we wanted to do more of that. So just always want to make, always want to make more money and have that, that freedom to, to be with our kids. So. There you go. Both parents self-employed happened to happen to have babies early in life, work through it. Stay married, work through it, figure it out. It's what you're looking for. They're out there. And when you were talking to a person, that's what hey, people call me. I'm like, I got this guy. He's ambitious. He's excited. He's fired up. I'm like, bro, did, tell me something. Like, if you call me and say, hey, tell me about this guy Jake you got. I go, well, I'll tell you what. He's a fighter. Got, got, had a baby like 17 years old, but got a job immediately, finished got his um finished high school, him, his wife, and and listen to this, they decided another have another baby, young, because they're like, hey, we got one, let's get one the same age. You know, let's don't wait seven, eight years just because we're young. Let's have another one. Paid all the bills, traveled, family vacations together, not scared to get on a plane, not scared to drive. Worker, worker guy, real polite. Both parents had self-employed. This this is facts, not he do anything we say. Right. Same thing I go with with Mike. I go like I graduated the University of Loyola and he played volleyball in college and he's got a real sharp um girl just married and he, he hey he traveled international. Got they paid him. I don't I don't know if they paid him much, but they paid him to play volleyball in different countries. And he's working in pharmaceuticals. He got that job, which means the interview is good. It's tall. Can't teach tall. You know, these are facts you can't argue with. I hate it when they give me this. He's so excited. He's so ambitious. He's so diligent. Like, wouldn't you say all those things about Jake? But, you know, he. it's not because he said it. It's because I see what he did. I see what he did. Like people say, when you on on the on Alliance Aiden, one of them says he's ambitious and upwardly mobile. Are you ambitious and upwardly mobile? Absolutely. What does that mean? But when he started his own business on Amazon and dropped fifteen thousand dollars, then he took a job in the movie industry. Only the only qualifications had to be eighteen years old. And he took the job. Then he was working so hard he was falling asleep. Well, how would you find out things about him? Here's the way I would do it. I'd be like, hey, if I met you, Dunleavy, let's let's go back to, let's pretend like you've got a job as an insurance agent with one of those companies and I've replaced some of your business. You ready? Yeah. Okay, you understand you're the guy that I replaced your business. Yeah. So you wouldn't like me if I told you that. Like, hey, I replaced all your business. You want to come to work for me? You wouldn't like right. me. No. So I'm going to call you up. Here's what I would do. I'll be like, ringy, ringy. You say hello. Hello. Hello, Dunleavy. This Aaron D. Un Aaron A A R O N Aaron Dunleavy. Yeah, that's right. Andy Albright, how you doing, Aaron? Doing well, Andy. Yourself? 
Good. You go by A A Ron or Aaron? A A Ron's fine. Oh, A A Ron. Okay. So um I we have crossed paths five or six times. I don't know if you've heard my name, but it looks like you work with XXX, United, um, United Life. Um, I'm gonna say a name because I want you to know I know you. Okay. Yeah. So hey, I, I know you. You work with Gerber Life. You do some business with them, right? That's right. That's a great company. How long, if you don't mind, the the reason we've crossed paths, I have some of the same clients that you have. I, you're out there hustling. I can tell you're a hustler, right? Yeah, that's right. Because I've seen you. How many houses you reckon you're in a week? Uh, I'd say probably about, I'm in about 30, 40 houses a week. Dad gumbo, you're a hustler. Congrats, man. Hey, listen, how you is that that Gerber or, or that XXX company? They they working out pretty good because I'm, you know, kind of comparing my stuff to your stuff. You is that working out pretty good? You see your is your big is your business persistent? Do you have chargebacks? How do you like that group? Yeah, they seem to be all right. Um, I've been losing some clients lately and it's it's kind of frustrating, but I'm trying to work through it. Hey, let me tell you something. Everybody I, I lose clients too. That's just part of it. Hey, where'd you go to school, man? I went to Penn State. No kidding. I'm an NC State guy. Okay. Yeah. Y'all at Nittany Lines or something? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that's about right. What is it? I probably got it wrong. No, you're right. You're right. Nittany Lions. Okay. Yeah. That's the one that guy got in trouble, that football coach guy, right? But he's still a legend, right? Yeah, absolutely. What's his name? Uh, Joe Paterno. Yeah, I got – um. One of my buddies, his parents are they're older, you know, and they're just, they love him. They love the school. You know, it's just every Saturday is like a legendary day, you know. Are you a big athletics fan like that? Yeah, absolutely. Good deal. Yeah, I'm big. Jim Valvano. You ever heard of Valvano, NC State, National Championship? You're too young for that. Yeah, Jimmy V, love him. You know how much trouble he got in? <laughs> I don't. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. The general was in major trouble. But you know what they remember? What's that? He's a winner. That's, That's what they remember. They remember if you win. Yeah. Hey, listen, the reason I was calling you, um, our company's expanding, and I, I used to work for a company just like yours. And the problem was, like, you can expect 20% to fall off. I was getting, like, 40, and mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out why. And the reason, can I tell you why? Yeah, tell me why. Because I got more companies I represent. So I always shop and get the best fit. If you only, listen, if all you got is a hammer, every solution to every problem you come across is a hammer. Right. Yeah. You need a screwdriver sometimes. You need okay. a matic sometimes. You need pliers sometimes. You need tweezers. And, and what I've got is tools. So every problem, I don't hit it with the same solution. So what if you're open, I'd love to have coffee with you. Um, and I'd like to apologize sometimes when the client has that hammer and you you used what you had, you used the hammer. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, don't kill me or anything, but there's a lot better options for the client. You know what I'm saying? Nicely. Yeah. Yeah, Let's absolutely. have coffee. What are you doing? What are you doing this afternoon at five? What are you doing tomorrow at 10? I'd just love to meet you. And if we don't have, we're going to hit it off. You know, I'm a wolf pack. You a lion. We might, you know, the tiger and the wolf might fight. I don't know. But <laughs> let's have coffee. Yeah, that sounds good. Tomorrow should work for me. Okay. So now, if somebody calls me and says, my upline, what are you telling about? He, he went to Penn State. What else? He's a big sports fan. What else? He's he's not upset. His company's getting charged back. So I think he's smart. I wish I'd have asked him where he went to school. I wish I wish I had asked him what kind of job he had, so that when I meet with you, I'm gonna say, "Hey, before you using insurance, what kind of work do you do? Property management? You with me? How long were you there? How much how much are they paying you in property management? You know, it's just I mean, I, everything you say, I can and will use against you. True that. True that. That's good. Thank you. I'm trying to throw compliments, find out things I can use against you, and try to get you to see my way of thinking. 
try to throw compliments, try to find out stuff about you that I can use against you. Or it's not really against you. I say that to be facetious. It's things I can use to get you to relate. Like, I don't know, Jake, you're not as much an athlete. Or are you? Are you a big athletics fan? Um, not so much anymore. I do enjoy watching sports and competitive, but not so much anymore. See, I would probably talk to him more of uh, physical labor. I would more, I mean, no, that's just, dirt bikes, huh? fast, fast, fast stuff that goes in the dirt, ATVs, side by ATV side, and stuff like that. So, so then I would, I would start talking about that. So you, Mountain have you, bikes. Have you, have you, have you how about weird one? Razor, you know, what razor is, oh, my favorite. Yep. You know, what's weird about a razor. Like we had a, a snowfall and it throws the snow into the car with you. It's weird. Is it the same way with dust? Oh, yeah. You have to wear one of those things that go over your face so you don't breathe it in. I feel like it's a terrible. You feel like Superman, but it you it's it's dirty. I don't know. I mean, I'm a soft hands, you know, paper pusher sort of a guy. So it's weird to me. What do y'all have? Do y'all have them or do y'all rent them or lease them? Yeah, no, we got, I've, I've got a dirt bike. The kids got a little dirt bike. They got a four wheeler. Everybody's got a four wheeler. The the big ones, the side by sides, we, we've only rented. We you ever make one. money doing that? That's not how you make money. No, nah, that's pure fun. How you make money before, before insurance? Oh, uh, worked in the movies construction. Okay. So like the setups, like the, all the big backgrounds, like yep. for your union. Yes, sir. Yep. Union, yep. But you still, I mean, a lot of people, you think union people don't work, but my guess is you did work, right? You pulled ropes and pushed stuff. Yeah, I worked my butt off, yeah. How many years did you do that? Five. You see what I'm saying, Aaron? I'm going to go for whatever he cares about and then try to find out if he's married, he's got kids. And then I'm going to try to, I'm just basically trying to make, I'm trying to, hey, it, it, if, if there's some reason not to work with him, I want to find that out too. Okay. Don't mean I'm not going to work with him. Like I got this guy, he's got some background, right? On his record. Now he was 16. They didn't do it. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to be aware of it. He's not as high a priority as a person who has no problems. But I got fishes in the line. You know, he might, he, he might turn out to be better than Jake. He might be turn out better than Mike. Right? You don't know. I try not to judge, but I do. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm expecting less, but I'm expecting more where everything looks right. So I put more effort over here, but I still keep that fish in the water. I still keep that line in the water because you never know. Big fish might bought that little worm. Hey, listen, I am looking for people like Aaron. And Jake, I have a couple more slots open. We're going to be hanging out at my cabin. We're going to be hanging out at the campus. And it's um, it's the 19th through the 21st. It's three nights. Thursday. No, it's two nights. Thursday night, Friday night. Is that right? No, no, it's three nights. Wednesday, it's November 8th, 9th, and 10th. So it's Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. It's three nights. That's a lot. So you'd come in on the 8th. Leave on the eleventh early that morning, yeah. But it's it's young studs. And by the way, I've had a couple requests for young studettes, young girls that are CEOs. We're gonna I'm gonna get that one on the books, and I'm gonna tell you when we're gonna do it. But this is guys, so this ain't your spouse coming, Jake. Are you lined up to come, Jake? Yes, sir. I just got an email like. In the last 15 minutes. Yes. And Mike, and Mike is good to go. And Aaron. So yeah, these studs, that. these studs are going to be there. We're looking for people like them. We would like them already making money because it ain't cheap to travel. It ain't cheap to get a hotel. You're going to have to get a hotel for three nights. It's you're going, but you, but you're going to get around these stud future CEOs and network like crazy. If you don't like shooting, there's parts of this you don't like. We're going to have shotguns and rifles and pistols, and we're going to have a good time, okay? And um, if you've never shot before, we were out this past weekend when people had never shot a gun in their life. We had a ranger out there that never shot a shotgun. He shot pistols. 
he adapted well. That's something gun could shoot in a minute. Like it took him, you know, one time. So if you've never shot before, it's fun. It's just, it's not all we're going to do. We're going to study insurance. We're going to talk about recruiting. Our investment advisors are going to be there, talk about securities license. It's going to be a great networking event. If you're interested, check with your manager and say, can I get an invite? We have limited, limited spots. I, I had a couple spots at the cabin, sold out. It's only spots that you stay in Burlington. You still get to come out the cabin. We'll eat some food out there. It's beautiful. You meet the headquarters, corporate headquarters. The credibility will go through the roof. So I'm not, what I'm not looking for is me in your 50s. I love those people. Keep hiring me and people like me. I'm looking for those young studs, okay, to come up a couple of days, even if they don't stay the whole time, but it's going to be crazy. So check with your manager if you're interested. Uh, limited stocks. If they tell you, yeah, we already sold out, there would then there you go, we sold out, but or we filled up the training block. Um Hollywood, Davies is in Utah with Joe Dukes, I hear. Get on that, go on there and check out hot spots and see where everybody is and make sure y'all taking advantage. And um, love y'all. Thank y'all guys killed it. Thank you so much for your time. Wait, wait, let me see, make sure there's anything else crazy my staff saying. You better say this. Nope, we're good. Or they didn't tell me in time. Okay. Bye. Thanks, y'all, for the opportunity. See you. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah.